typically I let your lab instructor um, cover the troubleshooting and emphasize the uh, process for troubleshooting. Um, in your text, this section provides a general review and application of something called the APM method, where you look at analysis, planning, and measurement as an approach to troubleshooting. Specific troubleshooting examples then of the power supply and diodes circuits then are um, looked at in this chapter. As you know, you can approach troubleshooting of a defective circuit or system using this analysis, planning, and measurement uh, method. A defective circuit or system is one with a known good input but with no output or an incorrect output. For example, in the diagram, a properly functioned DC power supply is represented by a single block with a known input and voltage and a correct output voltage. The defective DC power supply then is, re is reflected then in part B with an input voltage and an incorrect output voltage. So as you look at and study the block diagram you can see what they're trying to uh, what they're trying to show you here. So the correct DC input voltage is measured and you get a value. The incorrect voltage then input and output then is shown. <clears throat> In the analysis stage then the first step in troubleshooting a defective circuit or system is to analyze the problem which includes identifying the symptoms and eliminating as many of the causes as possible. In the case of a power supply example the symptom is that the output voltage is not a constant regulated DC volts. This symptom does not tell you much about what the specific cause may be. In other situations, however, a particular symptom may point to a given area where a fault is most likely. The first thing you should try then in your analyzing the problem is to eliminate any obvious causes. In general, you should start by making sure the power cord is plugged in to the active outlet and that the fuse is not blown. In the case of a battery powered system, make sure the battery is good. Something as simple as this is sometimes the cause of a problem. However, in this case, there may be power because there is an output voltage. Uh, typically in the lab, we're using the breadboards. Breadboards have been around for a long time. Some of the components have been around for a long time. So typically what happens in the lab is you get wear. Um, one of the things you might do if you're having a problem uh, when you're doing your labs is try wiggling the, the leads, make sure they're seated properly, uh, try a different part of the breadboard and sometimes that may fix your problem. Beyond the power check, use your senses to detect obvious defects such as burned resistors, broken wire, loose connections, uh, or an open fuse. Since some failures are temperature dependent, you can sometimes find an overheated component by touch. However, be very cautious in a live circuit to avoid possible burn or shock. For intermittent failures, the circuit may work properly for a while and then fail due to a heat buildup. As a rule, you should always do a sensory check of the analysis phase before proceeding. In the planning phase, start at the input where there's a known input voltage and work toward the output until you get a until you get an incorrect measurement. When you find no voltage or an incorrect voltage, you will have narrowed the problem to the part of the circuit board between the last test point and where the voltage was good and the present test point. In all troubleshooting approaches, you must know what the voltage is at, in to, to be at each point in order to recognize an incorrect measurement when you see it. Start at the output of the circuit and work toward the input. Check for voltage at each test point until you get a correct measurement. At this point, you've isolated the problem to the part of the circuit between the last test point and the current test point where the voltage is correct. Step three then use the half splitting method and start in the middle of the circuit 
if this measurement shows a correct voltage, you know that the circuit is working properly from the input to that test point. This means that the fault is between the current test point and the output point. Begin tracing the voltage from the, output, the point toward the output if the measurement in the middle of the circuit shows no voltage or in the incorrect voltage, you know the fault is between the input and the test point. Therefore, begin tracing the voltage from the test point toward the input. And then finally, the last step, the measurement portion. The half splitting method then is illustrated with the measurements indicating a particular fault open filter capacitor in this case. At test point three, you observe full wave rectified voltage that indicates that the transformer and rectifier are in fact working properly. This measurement also includes that indicates that the filter capacitor is open, which is verified by the full wave voltage at test point four. If the filter were working properly, you would measure a DC voltage at both test point three and test point four. If the filter capacitor were shorted, you would observe no voltage at all uh, at the test points except test point one, because the fuse would be the most would be most likely blown. A short anywhere in the system is a very difficult uh, defect to isolate. If the system is properly fused, the fuse will blow immediately when a short to ground develops. So they give you some ideas here about using different test points to determine what your signal on, in this case, your oscilloscope should look like. In fault analysis, in some cases after isolating a fault to a particular circuit, it may be necessary to isolate the problem to a single component in the circuit. In this event, you have to apply logical thinking and your knowledge of the symptoms caused by certain component failures. So in this case, your text is giving you different types of, uh, of, of malfunctions and faults that might occur. You have to become familiar with what the output should look like before you can do a proper troubleshooting. So in your text, go ahead and you know, and look through these cases where they show you the examples uh, of what a real, what a good current, a good um, test should look like and what a malfunction should look like. The effect of an open diode in a full wave rectifier, then, you know, by looking at the, the uh, output waveform, determining what the, in this case, what the ripple should look like, should give you an indication of what the output is supposed to look like versus a malfunctioning circuit. Effects of a faulty filter capacitor, again, they're showing you what it should look like, you know, the open filter, shorted filter, normal filter capacitor in a circuit. You know, and like I said, in, in every case, it's just, it's going to take your experience in looking at it and determining you know, what a good circuit versus a malfunctioning circuit looks like. The effects of a faulty transformer and open primary or secondary winding on a power supply results in a zero output. Okay, look, take a look at this, uh, this example here of troubleshooting uh, a power supply. You found that in the analysis phase that there's no output voltage from the regulator also, you found that the unit is plugged into an outlet and have verified the input to the transformer. You decide that using the half splitting method, using the scope is the best way to proceed through this. So take a look at this, you know, and go through what each step is showing here. Test point one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, follow the steps here, one through five, in determining what you think the possible malfunction could be.